Hello there. So when was the last time you said to yourself, let's go over all of these options over here and check what they do. Maybe we can find something useful. Well, I guess you never did that. So I took it on myself and today I'm going to show you the 20 most useful key shortcuts in Android Studio. I just want to mention that numbers 19 and 20 are not exactly key shortcuts, but they're probably the best thing to take with you from this list. Of course, I also provided timestamps, so if you ever come back to look for something, it will be easier. So let's get started. The first one is simply a way to check what are the parameters required for a method or a constructor of a class. So for example, over here, we can always come and check the parameters like that, but we can also press Ctrl P and it will show us all of the parameters required. The cool thing is that as we type, it will change and highlight the parameter that we need to input right now. The second one is a simple way to check what is the type of the variable. Of course, again, we can always hover and see that, but without the mouse, we can simply come here and press Control Shift P and it will show us that this is an integer and this is a string and this is a class, a nothing class. Next on the list is a way to get this light bulb that we always try to find when we have different warnings. For example, we want to click on this light bulb and see all the options. So with Alt Enter, we can simply open this menu without any trouble. It's also very useful, for example, in XML files when we want to extract some string. So we can simply press Alt Enter and then we can see all the options. So it's very easy, Alt Enter, Enter. And then if we have a lot of strings to extract, it's very easy. Next one is one of my favorites and it's some sort of code completion. So for example, if we have many different options that we don't know about inside an XML tag, so usually we just type in different letters and we hope that we're going to find our option, but with control space, we can see all the options available and we can do it anywhere we want. And the cool thing is that we can actually do it on the view itself. We can see all the options and we don't need to guess anymore. The next one is a pretty cool one. And it's actually a way to automatically generate a method. So for example, we have this chunk of code and we want to extract it into a method. So instead of thinking what is the way the method is going to look, we can simply select all of that and press Control alt m and then it will open this window and here we can select the visibility and give it a name and then we are going to see the signature of the method and we can press ok to create it. So now it actually created a method and it placed a call of the method instead of this code and you can see that Android Studio actually knows that we need to use these variables and these values are outside of this code, right? They're over here. So it created parameters for us because it knows that without these variables, we cannot use this code. So it's a very useful way to create methods and extract them without thinking about it too much. The next one is a way to surround our code. So for example, we want to create an if statement. We don't have to go here and say if and then brackets and then copy this code inside the brackets. We can simply select our code and press Control Alt T. And then we have all kinds of options. We can create an if statement. We can create a try catch. So if we're going to do the if, it will create and surround our code by itself. So the next ones are more related to navigation. So if we press and hold shift and then we press on the right or the left arrow, we can select one character at a time or deselect it. In this way, we can precisely select whatever we want. And if it's too slow, we can also add control to this. So control shift and arrows, and we can select a word at a time. Each time it sees a space, it simply jumps and selects the entire word. Now, if we do the same thing, control shift, but instead of the left and right arrows, we use the up and down arrows, we can grab 
lines of code and move them, right? So we don't have to come here and copy this line or cut it and place it here. We can simply press Control Shift and move it anywhere we want. Now, the next one is a very common one. We can refactor or actually rename variables or method names or class names, and it will rename the name anywhere in the code. So for example, we have this oven over here. So with Shift F6, we can change it once and we'll change it anywhere the same variable is used. The next one is pressing Alt and then using the left and right arrows. And with this, we can skip between tabs. So if we had a lot of tabs over here, we can use Alt and the right and left arrows to move between all of these tabs. Now we can do the same thing with Alt, but use the up and down arrows to jump and skip between different methods and classes. The next one is a mouse shortcut. So for example, we want to select this and this together. If we do it regularly by clicking on the left mouse button, we're not going to be able to do that. But if we click on the middle mouse button, we can select the code by the indentation. So it's especially useful when we want to change a lot of things that start by the same word, and then we can just rename something. The next one is something that I use a lot. For example, you wrote a lot of code and everything is messed up. You have a lot of spaces. The code is not organized. So then you can press on Control Alt L and all the code will get positioned in the right indentation. Another key shortcut that we have is if we have a block of code that we simply don't want to use right now and we want to deactivate it. So instead of just commenting line by line, or also instead of just putting this comment all around it, so we can simply select the code and press on Control Shift Backslash and it will comment everything for us. We can do this with any piece of code that we want. And of course, if we want to remove the comments, we can select it again and press again, Control Shift Backslash and it will remove the comments. The next one is also something nice to know. If we press on Alt and 6, it will show us all the errors and warnings inside our project. So it's nice to go over them and just close them one by one and then you know that you have nothing to worry about inside your project. So if you ever had that problem that you changed something inside your code and then you move to another place and you didn't remember where was the last change, you can press on Control, Shift and Backspace and it will bring you to the last place you edited your code. The next one is F2. With F2, we can just skip between all of the errors inside our code. So instead of looking on these little lines over here and try to find the location, we can simply start at the top and just press F2 and jump from error to error until we fixed everything. Now, as I told you, number 19 and 20 are not key shortcuts, but they're very important to know. First of all, number 19 will be the way you can actually assign your own key shortcuts. So if you have some kind of key shortcut that you don't like, or maybe you want to create a key shortcut for something that doesn't exist, you can go to File, Settings, and then press on Key Map. And over here you can find all kinds of options. And then when you find your options, for example, you want to change the key shortcut to run the project, you can go here, right click, and then you can remove the key shortcut that exists and create your own key shortcut. And that's very nice. So number 20 on the list is a thing called macros. Android Studio has a thing called macros and we can basically record chunks of code and then we can play them when we want. So for example, if we want to always avoid writing text views, so we can simply copy this one or cut this one. Then we can go to the macros, press on start recording, and then we simply paste this one. And we go back and say stop recording. And here we're going to give it a name, new text view. And now if we ever want to create a text view and we don't want to do it from the beginning, we can simply go into our macros, new text view, 
and we'll simply write down this chunk of code so we don't have to do it all over again and we can do it with any code that we want. So it's simply a way to create these templates of code and then running them. And if you think that going to the macros is something that takes too long, of course, we can also make a shortcut for that. So we go into settings, key map, and here we're going to find macros. And if we want to play a new template, we can simply assign a key shortcut for it, add key shortcut. We're going to do something like alt Q. And then it says that something else is assigned to alt Q, but we're going to remove and we're going to assign alt Q to play saved macros, apply OK. So the next time you want to create a text view, you can simply come here, press alt Q, and it will show you all the templates or all the macros that you saved, and then you can simply paste it. So that's a nice feature and it can save you a lot of time. So those were the 20 most useful key shortcuts in Android Studio that I found. Of course, you can create your own with the key mapping and you also know about macros. So I really hope that it helps you write your code faster now and navigate smoothly and see you next time.